Hello, my name is Yinuo, and in this video, I'll be showcasing the scripts I made to speed up the production of the scene Barbershop Pirates. I hope you enjoy! Welcome to the demonstration video for the Slim Stack Generator script. This script will generate houses on top of a given mesh, and you can give it other meshes to generate the houses with. To start off with, this is the correct pivot point orientation for the mesh. The X should be pointing along the mesh, and the Y should be pointing upwards. There are a lot of rules that you can tag your objects with to make sure that they generate in a way that you expect. For more information, you can look at the documentation. To import an object, you can select an object, choose the rules that you want to give it, and then you can add it to the list. You can also select multiple objects at once and add them to the list, like so. You can also load a list that you've made previously and you can choose whether to merge it with your current list or to wipe your current list and add it to the new one. Here is a previous list that I made. When you have a long list, you can select a mesh in the viewport and it will highlight and scroll to the object that you selected. The same way goes the other way around, where you can select objects in the UI and it will select the object in the viewport. You can delete an object by pressing delete item from list or, when you delete an object, it will give you a pop-up and ask you if you want to delete it from the list as well. If you choose to replace the mesh later, make sure that you do replace it before you generate, otherwise you can get errors. When you batch import objects, you might want to tweak them after you import them. To do so, select something in the UI, change a parameter, and click Update Selected Object. And this will update the object to your current parameters. To change the probability of a rule, Select the rule that you want to change under the rule menu and change the rule probability. It will update as you change it. So now that we have imported all of our objects, we can start generating the house. We can refer to this tab up here, house options, where we can see the number of houses we'll generate, the size of the house, and also the seed for the generation. You can save that seed and in the future you can uh, generate with the same layout again. So we can just keep these defaults for now. Let's generate a house. So now we have some other options after you generate the house. Uh, you can choose to re-randomize. So um, for example, you can choose to randomize the position. Uh, and we can randomize the accessories as well. So we can start by re-randomizing stuff as it is right now. So for example, we can randomize anywhere but window. As you can see, it re-randomizes uh, props. And you can see here that actually some of the materials uh, got messed up during the regeneration. This is just because Maya doesn't like deleting instances and can mess up the shader groups. But we can fix that by fixing up materials. Uh, sometimes though, even re-randomizing can just fix some of the things. If we randomize again and we get some green things, uh, I can show you the fixing up materials. You can see the green materials disappeared. You can also randomize as many things you want at a time. Uh, so now let's just try re-randomizing everything. So that you can actually now uh, even add new objects. So for example, this thing, right? Um, I want it to be a below window um, and it can be on all sides. I can add it to the list, right? And now if we re-randomize again, you can, you can see here that it actually added the balconies now because we added it and then we regenerated it. Uh, same thing goes for the randomizing amounts, uh, the weights, I mean. Let's say we want it to be mostly black chimneys. So what we can do is we can randomize the roof. We can go to the roof object, this one, the black one, this one, and we can just change, pump the weight up, update, and re-randomize. As you can see now, it has way more uh, black chimneys and way less white ones. So uh, this gives you a lot of room to change things even after you generate the house for the first time. So I went ahead and generated a, uh, a house with a lot more number of houses um, so that 
uh, it looks a bit more dense and is something more like what I would actually use for my scene and we can export it. Finish up the model, we uh, press this finish up model uh, which will merge it together along with the locators and it will name the locators correctly. It will also make a light map UV for the merged mesh uh, with a, a UV layout uh, just to give Unreal a head start because for complex objects uh, Unreal can really have issues generating proper light maps. And now you see we end up with a, a merged version of our mesh. And you can see that all of our uh, locators are named with a socket so that Unreal notices that they're a socket. We can uh, export this into Unreal. So now that we have this imported into Unreal, we can open it up. And we can see that all of our locators are imported. So I want to show you um, what it looks like in the scene for all buildings that I generated uh, with the script. There are a lot of materials um, and I don't want to have to redrag all the materials back onto the object whenever I import a new version of a procedural building. So what I can just do is pick a source and my target, which is the one that I selected, click OK. And you can see that it copies all the materials from one mesh to another. Some of these materials are new. They didn't get the proper materials, but unless you rename the materials or use a new material, it should work. Another script that I made was a script that generates decals based on the locators. You can give it a locator name, which is just called locator in this case because I didn't name my locator or anything. Uh, and for this one, we just give it a random name because we don't have a locator with another name. And we can just click OK. And as you can see here, it will spawn decals uh, where the locators are. Uh, now I want to show another one that I used. Um, so I made a blueprint with it's called cable connector. And now what we can do is we can click two of them, right click, make cables, and it will make spline meshes, which have this wind material applied to it. So they kind of look like they sway in the wind. And it will just make that here. But the good things about blind meshes is that you can actually merge them together. Merge them properly so then you can reduce your draw calls like that. So these are the scripts that I made to help me with my scene. Thank you for your attention.